Let's look at the Cobra Kai Dojo. Um, they've had kind of a rough season so far. At stage three, Davey Vega loses to Jojo Bravo. Matt Fitchett loses to Mike Outlaw. Later in the evening, though, they manage to take a coconut. In remembrance of Roddy Piper, they take a coconut to the head of Evangelistico. So, they are losing singles matches. They are kind of unfocused, but they got some revenge. Should, is this, are they satisfied with what they got? Can they, can they refocus at this point? I don't think there's any need for refocus. The way they lost the matches were not really out of their control. Jojo Bravo just was one step better than Vega that night. I think that's an acceptable loss. You know, you go best versus best, and, and the, someone's got to win. And in that case, it was Jojo Bravo. I don't think Davey Vega is going to be too upset with himself. And I think Matt Fitchett got the revenge from what happened when the submission squad came in and, and gave Mike Outlaw and gifted him a victory. So as much as we want to say that these two guys are are having a struggle a little bit, of it, but they've been around long enough to know what it takes to get back and refocus, and they know what their ultimate goal is too. I, I would say that it, it is a little bit disappointing, their performance this season compared to what it was last year, but I think at the same time these are two very talented very athletic and very experienced wrestlers. I don't think it's a refocusing, but they do need to realize they have had spotty performance. I mean, they're great talented performers, but they win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Individually, they win one, lose one. So it's, uh, there is a, probably a little refocusing needing, but they need to figure out how do they get more wins than going from win to loss, win to loss. Consistency. Yes, consistency, exactly. And to touch on a point we've talked about before, um, we've talked about Matt Fitchett being a little bit reckless. And uh, I, I'm sure you guys noticed, uh, he popped his shoulder out of socket and against Mike Outlaw. Uh, let out quite the audible um, mm -hmm. curse word. Mm -hmm. um, and then proceeded to pop his own shoulder back into place, continue fighting, uh, and... and you know, was a little seemed to be a little sore after the match. Needed some ice, uh, but you know he came back out later to team with Zach Sawyer's and looked fine. He was he had full functioning of his arm. Just real quick, Tito, do you think that's going to have any effect going forward? I think so. He obviously doesn't realize he might need to be a little bit more careful because he does have this reckless abandon and. You know, after the ma out, the match with Mike Outlaw, he went backstage and said nothing about his injury. If league officials knew that he was injured, they wouldn't let him go out there and perform again. And this reckless abandon is going to keep happening because if this injury didn't stop him from performing in the tag match, what's going to stop him at the next show from doing even something more crazier and hurting something worse? Yeah. Change topics on you here. Yeah, here. We've talked about Kennedy. We've talked about the dojo. Is Jake Durden being used to the fullest of his capabilities on the resurgence? No. That's just, no. I think Jake Durden is one of the most gifted athletes in the St. Louis area, and I think Stephen Kennedy has done a very poor job of, of managing him and, and getting him in positions where he can win because I think Jake Durden showed it all in stage one and really in the early parts of stage two just how dangerous he is. He's got this raw athleticism. He's huge, but at the same time can move. And that's a scary combination. And I, I don't know why he's been put in some of these positions he's been put into, but um, I think if the resurgence is going to go, they're going to go as far as Jake Durden does. Because I think he is really, as much as we want to talk about the Cobra Kai Dojo, I think they're fantastic. Uh, really, they're probably on paper one of the most talented groups of four people you can get together in a room and in, in the St. Louis area and the Midwest. There, that's a very, and I think Durden is head and shoulders above those other three, and he needs to be utilized to the best ability, especially since he's very, you know, he's a good ally. He's someone who's very loyal and someone who could be put in positions that maybe the other guys couldn't be. We've started to gather some stats as a team, and we've started to look at records, and he's 4-1 and one overall over the course of Season 1 and Season 2. Yeah. He's got one of the, the better records of, of everybody in the league. Um, could it be... A booking decision on Stephen Kennedy's part, you know, as he picks out who's going to, all right, you know, you know, we're going against Chaos Nation, who can I put Durden up against? Do you think it's Kennedy ma purposely making these choices knowing that he can get not necessarily an easy W, an easy win, but like 
like he knows that he can trust Durden in, in, in certain spots. Do you think that's kind of what it is? Absolutely. He, you know, look at the tag match at the last show at Stage 3. It was Stephen Kennedy and Jake Durden versus Mikazi and Nate Redwing. So he was used in the right spot. He matched up against Nate Redwing. He didn't have somebody smaller like Davey Vega or Matt Fitchett in his corner because that would be an easy W, you know, for the blacklist. It, I think he is being used to his fullest ability because, think about it, at stage one this season, he was the only person that won in the whole resurgence. So if you think he's not being used to his full capabilities, just look at the records from stage one. He was the only one that pulled out the W. Now, I will counter that with where Kennedy put himself against Casey Carrington. That's what I go back to. Ke Kennedy put his personal feelings aside. For the best chance to end Chaos Nation, I take my animal and I stick him on that sick puppy that is Casey Carrington. And I think that would have been the end of the Chaos Nation right there. That's what I go back to, is that Kennedy sometimes injects way too much of his own personal decisions when it comes to, hey, how am I going to match this guy? Or, hey, how am I going to match this guy? I think Jake Durden, 4-1, that's a fantastic record. And his one loss came against Jojo Bravo. So, I mean... Came against Davey Vega. David Vega, excuse me. So, you come in here and you look at the guys he's lost to, it's his own teammate. So, he's come out here and he's showing why he's so good. But, uh, certainly, I think there's higher level, higher leverage situations he could have put, been put into that really would have paid off in a big way for the resurgence. But you also need to think about it. Who knows Casey Carrington better than anybody in the PWCS? It's Stephen Kennedy. They were friends for 10 years. They were tag partners for 10 years. But who's going to be more blinded by rage and prone to make mistakes? Stephen Kennedy, because he hates him now. There's that level of hatred. I, you sick the beast who has no, he has no chips in the game. He's just there to win, and he go out there and beat him up. Kennedy's sitting there blinded by rage. That's my counter to you, is that he's making things personal or made things personal. I, I see it as 6 of one and half a dozen of the other, I think. We saw Kennedy beat Carrington I mean, yeah. at stage two, so I mean it. It could go either way. I can right. I can see how it would go either way. 